Hello, friends. We all know that in order to live, we have to breathe, and to carry out this very important function, we use the respiratory system. Breathing is an involuntary process that we do without realizing, but we can control it. Today, we're going to find out what breathing consists of and how the respiratory system works. The first thing we need to know is that breathing consists of inhaling air in nature to take advantage of the oxygen it contains and thereby expelling the carbon dioxide, which is the part of the air we don't use. The first phase, which is when the air enters the lungs, is called inhalation. The second phase, which is when we expel the air we don't use, is called exhalation. They are the exact opposite. The respiratory system is responsible for breathing and for that it uses the lungs and the airways, which are the parts that compose it. The airways are tubes through which the air passes until it reaches the lungs. And they are made up of the nose and mouth the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, and the alveoli. Now, let's take a look at how the respiratory system works. When we breathe in, air enters our body through our nose and mouth. The air then passes through the pharynx and into the larynx. Did you know that the larynx contains the vocal cords, which allow us to speak or sing? La 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 la. They are like the strings of a guitar. When they vibrate, they produce the voice. Well, once the air has passed through the larynx, it reaches the trachea. The trachea is divided into two tubes through which the air passes, which are called the bronchi. The bronchi, once inside the lungs, branch into narrower tubes called bronchioles. And each bronchiole leads into many small sacs called alveoli and it is there in the alveoli where gas exchange takes place. The oxygen in the air passes into the blood through some very small blood vessels which are called alveoli. Then, what is left over from the air, which is carbon dioxide, travels back through the respiratory system to be expelled outside. As you can see, the respiratory system is very important, so we have to take good care of it, and for that, we have to practice a lot of sport and take care of nature so as not to pollute the air we breathe. Healthy lungs are pink, but when we breathe in tobacco smoke or when the air is very polluted, they turn brown and stop working properly. When this happens, we get tired without doing anything and we start to feel really bad. It's certainly not very smart to damage our lungs, don't you think? So, make sure you do lots of physical exercise and remember, never ever smoke. 
to ensure that your lungs will always be very healthy and that you will always be very happy. Goodbye friends, see you in the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends and welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today, we're going to learn all about the nervous system. We all know that humans have five senses. Sight, which is the ability to see through our eyes. Taste, which is what we use to enjoy different flavors. Smell, which allows us to smell the wonderful senses in flowers. Hearing, which we use to listen to our favorite music. And touch, which is how we feel tickles or soft caresses through our skin. Well, our nervous system is what receives all the information captured by these senses, interprets it and responds to each situation. The nervous system has special cells called neurons and it is divided into two parts the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the skull and the spinal cord. The skull is where the brain is located as well as the cerebellum and the brain stem. The brain occupies the largest part of the skull and is in charge of controlling our memory, emotions and voluntary actions such as reading, writing or jumping. The cerebellum also coordinates our balance as well as our movements. It is because of the cerebellum that we are not constantly falling down. Thank you cerebellum. The brain stem links the brain to the spinal cord and controls the automatic actions such as our heartbeat or the blinking of our eye which happens without us even realizing it. The spinal cord is another part of our central nervous system. It is within our spine and it almost looks like a highway connecting the brain to all the body's nerves. The spinal cord is responsible for all the reflexes like when you touch something hot. We pull our hand away instinctively without even thinking. The peripheral nervous system is a set of nerves which travels around our body and is divided into two major parts. Sensory nerves and musculoskeletal system. The sensory nerves carry information received by the five senses to the brain. The musculoskeletal system transmits the brain's responses, allowing the muscles to perform. So, if we were to fall in the water, for example, the automatic system would send a message to our muscles, ordering us to swim and get out of the water. Thank goodness, because otherwise we would drown. Well, now you know about the nervous system. It's really interesting, isn't it? Goodbye, friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning TV. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends and welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today, we're going to learn about the female and male reproduction system. When we are born, there are a series of characteristics which clearly differentiate a woman from a man's body. These are the sexual organs. As we grow, our bodies change and it is easier to tell us apart from a girl and a boy. But when we're little, when we're still babies, it isn't so easy to tell the difference at a simple glance, don't you think? So let's learn a little bit more about both the female and the male reproduction system. The female reproduction system is made up of various organs with a majority located inside the lady's interior. These organs are the ovaries, the fallopian tube, the uterus, the vagina and the vulva. The ovaries are a pair of tiny glands 
where the female sexual cell, known as the ova, is formed and then matures. This occurs during puberty, which is when the human being develops and we stop being children and become adults. The fallopian tube are two long narrow tubes connecting the ovaries with the uterus. The uterus is a hollow muscular organ where babies develop during pregnancy. The vagina is an elastic muscular tube connecting the uterus to the exterior and is also where the babies come out during birth. The vulva is the only external organ of the female reproduction system and it protects the entrance of the vagina. Well, now we all know about the female reproduction system, now let's look at the male one. The testicles, the vas deferens, the seminal vesicle, the penis and the urethra. The organs of the male reproduction system are in the interior as well as on the exterior of the man's body. The penis is an external muscular organ and is where the urethra is located. And the urethra is a tube which expulses both urine and semen onto the exterior. Just in case you didn't know, semen is a mixture of liquid seminal and sperm. The testicles are two organs found on the exterior of the body. During puberty, male sex organs called testosterone start to produce. The vas deferens communicates the testicles with the urethra and is found within the body. The seminal vesicle produces a fluid called liquid seminal, which transports the sperm. Well, now you know the female and male reproduction systems, fundamental for human beings to reproduce. Next, we can learn more about reproduction in the video dedicated to that topic. Did you find it interesting? I hope so. Goodbye, friends. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends! Welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today, we're going to learn about the circulatory system of the human body. The main function of the circulatory system is to carry through the blood the nutrients to the cells of our body. It is formed by the heart, arteries and veins and its proper functioning is essential for us to have good health. I have a curiosity. Do you know how much all of the arteries and veins would measure together, put in single file? They would measure 96,000 kilometers, which would be equivalent to almost two and a half laps of the Earth. It's incredible, right? The heart has the main role in making sure that the blood travels around the body. With its 100,000 pulsations per day, it ensures that blood circulates throughout our body, allowing it to distribute oxygen and nutrients into our cells. We're going to start a journey through the circulatory system so we can understand it much better. The journey of blood begins in the heart. With the pulsations of the heart, the blood comes out through one of the greatest highways of the circulatory system, called the aorta. From that moment, blood flows through our body, through many veins. During this trip, the blood is delivering oxygen and nutrients to the cells through the capillaries. It reaches the neck, head and brain through one side. From there, the blood continues to flow into our arms, then through the aorta, around the thorax and abdomen, and finally reaching both of our legs. As this trip is circular, that is to say it has no end, the blood starts the trip back to the heart to regain nutrients and oxygen. The blood that returns from the lower part of the body flows through the inferior vena cava. The one that returns from the arms and head travels through the superior vena cava. All that blood reaches the lungs, where it gets oxygenated and returns back to the heart. There, the journey starts again. The truth is that it is incredible 
The blood is permanently traveling inside our body. Don't you think? Well, now you know a little bit more about the circulatory system. But before saying goodbye, we want to remind you that for our body to work well, we have to do a lot of physical exercise and have a balanced diet. You have to eat vegetables, fruit and fish, and reduce eating sugar and sweets as much as you can. And of course, spend less time sitting in front of the TV or the computer. So now you all know. Right, now everyone, go to run and jump. Goodbye, friends. Oh, and do not forget to subscribe to Happy Learning TV. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.